Well, hello, and thank you for joining me uh, on this presentation that I've entitled Take the Toxic Out of Cleaning. It's kind of bittersweet, I must admit, because this is the last of a series that I started back in December, uh, which included demystifying detox. We talked about breaking up with self-sabotage. We talked about goal setting and how to proceed um, uh, in, in a most efficacious way. We talked about move, which we I focused on about uh, exercises. Then I um, had a webinar on intermittent fasting. We discussed thing, uh, we discussed it, uh, <laughs> about uh, sleep that I entitled Sleep 101. Uh, last week, it was a rousing time. I, I talked about chocolate, and it was a most enjoyable uh, webinar by those that listened. I can tell you that from the response that we got. And as I said this evening, we're ending up with Take the Toxic Out of Cleaning. So this is going to be the end of this series. I do want to say at the start of this, however, if there are topics that you would like to hear more about or learn more about that we have not discussed uh, uh, previously, please, uh, we would invite you to go ahead and email your recommendations to us. You can do so at office at pro-activewellness.com, or you can call the office at area code 217-431-2010. Let us know what your recommendations or su your suggestions might be. And if we uh, hear from enough people regarding a particular topic, well, I can assure you that it'll be something that we will plan on doing in the, in the near future. And also, I want you to know that I am currently in the developmental stages, so to speak, uh, trying to create a new series that we will continue in the not too, di too distant future. So without any more further ado or um, commercials regarding our upcoming webinars, let's dive into now taking the toxic out of cleaning because uh, we want to talk about this, this issue because it's a very important one, especially as I, I mentioned a few moments ago, if you've been through the webinar series, the objective was to get the individual as healthy as possible so that he or she can go ahead and enjoy the best performance of their life. Now, a very important aspect of this is the is the cleaning products that we have because we've cleaned out our bodies and now our homes in which we put our bodies in for the majority of time, they've gotta be clean as well. And you know, when it comes to, to cleaning the homes, it's really easy for most of us to assume that anything we buy at the store has to be safe because you know, we think it's been tested, it's been, uh, you know, uh, gone through all of these uh, hoops and, uh, and whatnot in order to be deemed safe for consumers use but in reality that really isn't the case now most of you'll probably find a toxic cleaning product it, it, there's a warning label that's accompanied by a poison control hotline number to call if the product is accidentally ingested if you look at some of these heavy duty cleaners you may see that skull and crossbone on there or you may see a sticker uh, a yellow mark on there that that uh, alarms or, or brings your attention to it, stating that uh, on this label, it is, a, it is a poisonous or noxious chemical. And if it's been ingested by a child or by a pet or whatever, there is a control hotline number that you're to call. Unfortunately, just because it's meant for cleaning doesn't mean that it's healthy for your body. And even if it doesn't have that label on there, it doesn't mean it's safe because household cleaning products, they're crammed. And when I say crammed, that's really an understatement. They are jam packed full of chemicals that aren't fully disclosed. They list a few of them on the label in order to satisfy the powers that be, but there are just as many, if not a multitude more of ingredients that aren't fully disclosed and that aren't approved of in the same breath and they may be causing you harm not only to you but to your family to your pets or individuals that come into your home that um you know visit you from time to time so what we want to do is to talk about the poison warning now the average household the average 
household has over 62 toxic chemicals. And according to the environmental experts, these ingredients in the common household cleaners have been linked to such disorders or diseases as asthma, cancer, reproductive disorders, hormonal disruptions, and, and other various neurotoxicities, one of the most infamous or famous of which is Parkinson's disease. And now some of the studies that I've seen uh, show people who work as cleaners, uh, whether it be in the industrial realm or as home cleaners, you know, household uh, people that come in, household maids or, or whatever the do cleaning, uh, even in hotels and various uh, uh, institutions like that, they've been found to have lung damage that's similar to what you would get by smoking cigarettes, uh, like 20 cigarettes a day. And that, I think, is a pack of cigarettes a day. And that's really, really pretty disturbing, if you ask me. So let me repeat this for a moment. I was saying that, um, you know, many of these household cleaners, they've been linked to asthma. That's a breathing disorder. Uh, and how many children today are getting, uh, where they're being diagnosed with more and more asthmatic issues than ever before? Of course, cancers, and we're always having a new cancer that's added to the list, uh, probably every two to three months, reproductive disorders, hormonal disruption. And, and then, you know, we've got to stop and think about this one. Who does most of the house cleaning? And I'm not being a sexist here, but I am just stating a fact. Mostly it's, it's delegated to the women and they, they clean the house, right? And the products that they use, they're exposed to. And who has most of the hormonal disruptions or issues that are seen by doctors today? The number one, uh, number one being thyroid issues. Well, it's the female. And as I said, also the, uh, the neurotoxicities. And, and like I said, that's really very, very disturbing. So um, they, it doesn't stop there, though, uh, just as how it affects the, the human. Now we want to talk about, well, the human, the little humans now, because I want to talk about not only the little humans, the children, but also the pets as well. And if you have pets or children, uh, stop and think. Where do they usually reside? Typically on the floor, right? You've got your kids playing on the floor. You've got your pets running across the floor, lying on the floor and whatnot. If indeed that's a fact in your household, then you need to pay close attention to the type of floor cleaner that you're using. Because in many commercial brand floor cleaners, there are vapors that linger and they really are dangerous, very, very dangerous especially if you have a floor that it is absorbent, um, like carpeting. Carpet is going to hold these cleaners in it, in the fibers, and it's gonna leach. You're gonna have what's called off-gassing. Or if you have some of these synthetic wood floors or whatever they are, those are leaching as well because those are chemical components that do that. So. What you need to do, if I may say so, is if you have a situation that you have a pet, we'll say, then you really need to do research to find a pet safe floor cleaner. And if you do find it, that it's going to be um, safe for the pet. Most of the time, that means it's going to be safe for your baby. If you have a, a, you know, an infant as well that's crawling across the floor or learning how to walk or whatever it might be or you know something, or you can make your own floor cleaner out of natural products uh, so that you know exactly what's in it. And not to despair, we'll talk about that as we get a little further into it. Um, you know, the same goes for the surface cleaners and the yard or the garden products. If anyone is likely to be eating off of a surface uh, or walking or playing on a surface, then you know, you need, you should do your best to ensure that the products that you use to clean those surfaces are gonna be free and clear of harmful toxins. I mean, how many times has it been when you know, you're preparing a meal, you could be stirring something and something spills out of the bowl or you drop some pieces of fruit or whatever it might be on the countertop and you know, it's clean. So you just 
whip it up with your fingertips and you go ahead and eat that little dribble or you eat those pieces of fruit or whatever it might be because you think it's safe because the countertop is clean. It may be clean, but the question now is, what was it cleaned with? And the same goes for dropping it on the floor. The kids are sitting there watching the television or watching a, a movie or something and they get excited and they will move around and they spill something on the floor and, and they're quick to go ahead and just lick it up or pick it up with their fingers because they don't want mommy or daddy to see what they've made or the mess that has been made. So they clean it up. Or one of your little pets runs there to the aid of your youngster uh, and licks it up for them, you know? Thanks a lot, Fido. And they've licked it up and then not only have they licked up the food, that is your children or the pet, but they've also licked up the residue that was left there by the cleaning agent that cleaned that floor. So as I said, the same goes for all of those things in the yard, in the garden, uh, on the surface, the walking or the playing surfaces. You need to do your due diligence and find out about the products there and if they do contain harmful toxins, okay? Okay, so what do you do or what do you think is the most dangerous cleaning product? Because the most acutely dangerous cleaning products are the corrosive drain cleaners. That's got to be number one. So that can be either in a liquid or a crystal form. And then if we go down the list of the most acutely dangerous cleaning products, we move from the drain cleaners then we look at the oven cleaners, and then of course, the acidic toilet bowl cleaners, right? Those corrosive chemicals can cause severe burns. They can burn the eyes, they can burn the skin, and if it's ingested, they'll burn the throat, they'll burn the esophagus, and all the way down into the, into the stomach. So look, some of the ingredients to look out for include one of the most famous of which is chlorine bleach. You know what it does to your clothes, right? If you spill some bleach onto your clothes, it's no longer that color. It becomes bleached. It becomes without color, see? And so you got the chlorine bleach. Be very, very careful about the bleach spilling on your skin, spilling into your eyes, or God forbid, if you breathe it, you know, you, you have that scent. That's why they have the unscented now or the naturally scented chlorine bleach because it's such a, a terrifying astringent. If you breathe that stuff in, it will burn your mucosa. It'll burn your nose. It'll burn your mouth, your throat, your esophagus, your stomach. Now we move from the chlorine bleach to the ammonia. Remember that, oh my gosh, the ammonia smell, it, it arrests your breathing. You can't breathe around a strong ammonia scent. You know why? It's because the body being fearfully and wonderfully made is protecting itself from being damaged any further. So immediately your airways are stopped, your breathing mechanism is arrested and you can't breathe any more than that. It literally stops you in, in your tracks, even without you consciously participating in it. That's how amazing the body is. So it does that and to protect itself from the fumes that are really highly irritating and uh, they're, they're, just, they're erosive, they're acidic, they'll burn you, and they can even trigger uh, asthma attacks in individuals. Uh, so, and and I'll, I promise you, we'll get into more of the details on this a little bit more as we go along, all right? But first I wanna kinda lay the groundwork here, the foundation. So in doing that, I wanna share with you some of the federal guidelines. The, um, the cleaning products, unlike foods now, or beverages, cosmetics, or other personal care products, they're not required. I want you to understand this. They're not required by federal law to carry a list of their ingredients. See, the cleaning products, again, like food or beverages, cosmetics, and the personal care, the, the cleaning products are not required by law to carry a list of the ingredients. So for years, companies have claimed that providing a list of a uh, full list of ingredients uh, so would, would go against their rights to keep their formula preserved and private. You know what I mean? They don't want to 
they don't want the competition to know what they're using if it's a good product, if it does what it says they promise it doing. So because of that, less than 7%, less than 7%, 7 out of 100 of the cleaning products on the market adequately disclose their contents. So what, what I'm saying here is, or because of this fact, you have no idea what you're exposing yourself to. You have no idea what's touching your skin, what's getting on your eyeballs, what you're inhaling, what is being spilled. You have no idea what your pets are licking up, what your children are licking up or being exposed to. This means literally that the manufacturers have no reason. Listen, they have no reason to avoid hazardous chemicals that could happen to clean thoroughly. <laughs> Even if they trigger asthmatic attacks or skin rashes or they're linked to cancer, they have no reason to, to avoid those, those agents because they don't have to list them. See, so they're, they're free and clear of this. And the Consumer Product Safety Commission, you may have heard of them, the CPSC, uh, and it, this is the federal agency. They're charged with protecting a consumer from thousands of types of consumer products. And you know what? This agency, and I'm, and I'm telling you the truth here, they have only 500 employees throughout the entire nation. That's how small this agency is. They only have 500 employees. And that means that this list of dangerous products slips through the cracks each and every day over and over and over again. Can you imagine the burden of proof that's upon them? These 500 people that show up for work throughout the entire nation have to look over literally tens of thousands of cleaning products that are put out on the market. So, you know, I've got to ask, how good, how good a job do you think they're doing? And then to top that off, the companies don't even have to list the, the agents or the chemicals that they're putting in to these products. So it's like, eh, it's a, it's a cloud without water. You know, there's nothing to it. So we, I move on now, and, and I wanna to talk to you about the toxic burden now that this presents to you and to me, to everybody. Every day, because of these facts that I, that I just shared with you, every day, your body is fighting against the myriad of toxins you're exposed to, every single day. This is how amazing the human body is. I, I, I'm telling you, every time I do research, every time I'm made aware, of facts like this, I, I'm just overwhelmed with awe and, and the utmost respect for the body, just how amazing it is. Because, you know, manufacturers argue that in small amounts, of course, that's the argument, toxic ingredients like in the household cleaners aren't likely to be an issue. And I know you've heard that argument um, on the news or on your magazine programs or whatever it is that, that, that you're watching. And, and they say like taking a dip in a pool treated with chlorine, it, it's not harmful because you know, it's only small amounts and you only do it once in a while. And, and when you do it, it's not that long. That's a bunch of baloney. For every action, there's always, always is absolute and equal and opposite reaction. But you know, regular exposure and exposure in combination with other chemicals, they will say, and it's true, if they've, if they've not been studied, so there's no way to gauge the risks that are involved accurately. Well, I'm not all about accuracy. I'm about reality. And the reality is this. If you're exposed to a chemical, then there is an effect that is toxic that has been introduced to your body. It's that plain and simple. I don't have to have a whole litany of tests that accurately demonstrate this. I know but because simply put, as I said before, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. And if it's a toxic chemical, then there is, listen, this is how profound this statement is, there's a toxic reaction. <laughs> really simple, right? Yeah, you don't need the studies to, to know that. So now let's get a little bit deeper in here now that we have agreed that there is a toxic reaction because I want to share with you the chemical disease connection, the chemical disease connection. What we do know, 
what what is undoubtedly and um, undeniably a fact is that chronic exposure to toxic fumes and chemicals. And when I say chronic, it means repeated exposure. So look, what, what I'll say is you use the same household cleaning product to dust the furniture, to clean the countertops, to clean your bathroom, to clean out the bedroom. And when you do this, you do it repeatedly. Maybe you do it every day in some circumstances. Maybe you do it three times a week. Maybe you do it twice a week, whatever it might be. It is a toxic exposure because it's repeated, right? Of these fumes and these chemicals, they add up to what is known as the body's, your body's toxic burden, see? Or other, it's also known by some docs or in some research papers as body burden. It's a burden, it's a toxic burden or weight that's put upon your body. It refers actually to the total uh, accumulation of toxins in your body, specifically the number of chemicals that are stored in your tissue at any given time. What we do in our center is we can go and we do heavy metal toxicity. We, we can test the heavy metals. We can test, and some of the chemicals I'll talk to you about here down the road, the phthalates or the, um, the um, oh, the halogens, and it, it goes on and on and on, but I, I digress here. But, but my point is when your system is exposed to too many heavy, medical, heavy metals or pesticides or pharmaceuticals, that is the drugs you get prescribed from your doctors, because those are toxins as well, believe it or not, or other toxins, your body becomes fatigued. It gets weakened. It gets worn down. It just gets exhausted trying to combat these things and protect itself. And it loses its ability to flush them out, to get rid of them. So what happens is now they continually build up, build up, build up, build up. They're added to each and every exposure you have to these cleaning products, these chemicals, or whatever it might be. And what happens then, it leads to illnesses. And some of the illnesses are heart disease, cancer, autoimmune disorders, neurodegenerative diseases, like, and others like fibromyalgia, hormone imbalance, infertil infertility, that's just to name the few. But, but what I want you to know is, in naming the few, I have listed the fastest rising disease categories in our country today. Heart disease, up there in the top three. Cancer, in the top three. Autoimmune disorders, in the top four. Neurodegenerative diseases, in the top five. Fibromyalgia, hormone imbalance, infant, all well, well up there in the top 10. That's what's happening. And one of the reasons, as I have stated over and over and over again, it's not because our bodies are getting weaker or changing. It's because our environment is becoming more and more toxic every, by leaps and bounds, every single day, what we're exposed to. And, and, and we're going to be exposed shortly if we allow to this 5Gs this uh, new network that they're developing and and i'm 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 getting off the the subject in in one respect but not in another you know in europe they have outlawed it they will not allow that network to come into europe however in the united states our arms are wide open and we are welcoming it and uh it's one of the the advances we're making in the speed of our technology there is a huge price to pay. One of these days, I will um, I'll dedicate an entire webinar to that. But anyway, let's get back onto it, and we'll get back to the chemicals here. And the one I mentioned a few moments ago was the phthalates, the phthalates. These are really found in many household products, like especially, especially the air fresheners. Oh, my gosh. Get rid of those stinkers and open the windows. And, and they're in the dish soaps and even the toilet paper, you know, oh, it's fresh and all of this. Stuff. The phthalates are chemicals used to extend aromatic strength in scented products. You know, they smell fresh and clean 
for a long, long, long time, even though they have been exposed to this noxious odors over and over again, and uh, th they, they hold this chemical scent, and that's where they are, in the air fresheners, the dish soaps, the toilet paper, those are the types of chemicals. Now, what, what do they do? I'm glad you asked, because what phthalates do, they disrupt hormonal secretion from the body and they can cause infertility. And um, exposure mainly occurs through inhalation. You know, you breathe it, right? The scents, again, uh, like I told you, the air fresheners, dish soaps, toilet paper, all that, you're breathing it is the scents. It's also absorbed through the skin, through scented soap products as well, you know? And when you wipe your bottom, uh, it's, it's, we have cancers now that are, that are being propagated in reproductive organs, especially in the prostate of guys. The research is showing us, yeah, the scented toilet paper, wiping our bottoms with scented toilet paper gives rise to the potential of developing prostatic cancer. Who would have thought, right? But look, again, may I humbly repeat it, for every action, there's always an opposite reaction, always, always. And as I said, this can be absorbed through the skin, through the scented soap products, through the bath oils, the scented bath soaps and whatnot. And it's problematic because the skin, not like the digestive system, it doesn't have any safeguard against the toxins. So those, those chemicals go straight into the organs. They're absorbed through the skin, and they get into your organs. And, you know, hey, Calgon, take me away. And if I use it enough repeatedly, then they're going to take you away, all right? They're going to take you to the hospital. <laughs> That's where you're going to go. And uh, you're going to stay there a while. Um, uh, look, I, I'm very serious about this. And when you expose the skin to this over and over and over again, as I said a few moments ago, you develop a toxic burden where it becomes so much so that the barriers of the defense mechanisms of the body are broken down. Now it can't stop it and it just, boom, goes right into the body directly, right? So phthalates. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about this one too. Antibacterial doesn't mean it's safe. This is one of the latest, greatest crazes now. We turn around, we've got little antibacterial bottles we carry in the purses and in our pockets. And um, wherever we go, we go to public places now, they've got little dispensers where you squirt it on and this and that and everything else. So look, before I get into this, um, well, well, no, I, let me get into this and then I'll, I'll talk in a moment. It, there's a chemical in this stuff, it's called triclosan, triclosan. Now, and I've done numerous videos on it, but anyway, triclosan is found in most of the liquid dishwashing detergents and in the hand soaps that are labeled antibacterial. Now, this chemical really works well as an agent that can promote the, the growth of drug-resistant bacteria. It can do that, but you got to understand it also disrupts the hormone function and, and also, if you read the fine print, and if it's not there, let me share with you, it's also a possible carcinogen. So look, when you wipe your hands with this stuff, yeah, it's killing those, um, those bacteria on the hands, but it's also being absorbed into your body, and it's disrupting the hormonal production in your body whether it's testosterone, progesterone, estrogen, insulin, cortisol, it doesn't, glucagon, it doesn't matter what the hormone is, it's disrupting your body's ability to produce the hormones. And you know, we're creatures of habit, we like to be clean, so every so often through the day, hey man, we pump out a little bit and put it on our hands, and boom, 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 we're out in public a lot, we want to feel, so we, boom, we pump it on there and do that, and um, more than that, you know, more than the pumping on our hands, the research, the studies that I've, that I've seen have found that rivers and streams now have a very high level of this in, in the water. Why? Because, hey, we rinse our hands and this stuff goes down the drain and um, boom, and it's toxic to algae 
and it's a major disruptor of the ecosystem. It's killing the fish too, it's killing the plants in the water. And, and what you wanna do, look, now that I have um, you know, put a target on triclosan and told you to avoid it if you possibly can, what you can do is you can use simple detergents and soaps with a very short ingredient list. And you choose the alcohol-based hand sanitizers instead of the triclosan. You know, isopropyl alcohol, squirt a little bit on your hand, you're done. Or you can, you can use the simple soaps, the very simple soaps with a short ingredient list, you know? You can use that and go, and, and, and if you don't have any of that available, my goodness, go to the nearest restroom and just put your hand underneath the water and, um, you know, the warm water if you can. If not, the cold water will work. You just put it under there, move your hands around, pretend like you're washing your hands without soap. You're just using the water and sing, row, row your boat. One stanza, row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 merrily. Life is but a dream. That's it. Do it a little slower than what I just did, but do it for that length of period of time. And then take the towel out and then pat your hand dry and go on your merry way. Okay? That will be sufficient. I promise you. You'll just wash it off. Do it just like that because your body's defense mechanisms are at work. So before you recognize that bacteria is on your hands, the body has already identified the culprit and it's already. Um, uh, destroying the bacteria that's there. So all you do is go into the restroom and you wash the, um, the casualties off your hands and you pat it dry and you thank your body for a job that's well done, right? That's it, that's all you have to do. So we move on now to the scented laundry detergent. Oh my gosh, oh, it smells so good. Don't you want your clothes to smell outdoor fresh? Or don't you want, and you know, if you want them to smell outdoor fresh, put them outdoors, you know, and hopefully where you live, um, <laughs> you know, you're not smelling diesel fuel or car fumes or whatever, okay? But look, um, that, um, that ocean breeze or that cotton scented laundry detergent, it may smell great to your nose, but it's extremely dangerous to your overall health. Now think about this, you know, you're putting this on your body. You're putting the shirts on, the underwear on, the, the stockings on, whatever garments they may be, and you're wearing them, you know, six or eight hours in a day, whatever it might be, or even longer. So these chemicals now are all over you, see? And it's extremely dangerous. If one of the ingredients in a product is listed as fragrance, if it's listed as fragrance, that's what it's called, that's the ingredient, fragrance then chances are that product has a cocktail of non-natural chemicals that are really, really very toxic and not good for you at all. So what they've done in the lab is they've mixed all these little chemicals together to make it smell like, um, I don't know what it smells, it smells good, right? That's what they've done, you don't want that. Again, I, I fall back to the research and the studies that I've seen, they found that one third or even more than one third of all the scented detergents contain at least one chemical flagged by the EPA as cancer causing. Got it? So it's on the average, toxic laundry detergent products emit 17 different toxins that go unlisted on the label. And they, they range from something that causes skin irritation to that which causes neurological damage to that which causes cancer. So think about it, really. If you're using a detergent, uh, you're using your detergent, I should say, not just to wash everything you wear, but to wash the fabric that you, that you breathe into your body for hours every night, right? the the bedding the pillow covers all of that and if you're using the detergent the fabric softeners the bleaches the brighteners or other of these agents then you are you are enveloped in in toxins i mean from the time you rise up to the time you lay down again and rise up again 
and every moment in between. You are, you are overwhelmed with toxins if you live in that chemically laden world. All right? Okay. Now, it, it gets worse. All right? It really does. Because I want to talk to you about quaternary ammonium compounds. Quaternary ammonium compound. You may have never heard of this. They're called quats. All right? Quats for short. This chemical is another type of antimicrobial, and it poses the same problem as the triclosan. Remember in the hand cleaners? But what it does, it helps to breed, it helps to breed antibiotic resistant bacteria. It doesn't clean them, it helps to breed them. I, I want to get that across, and not, not that you, I just want to make sure that this anchors into your gray matter, into your brain. That's what these chemicals do, and it's a skin irritant. There was one 10-year study uh, of contact dermatitis. They did a, just contact dermatitis. They found that the quats to be one of the leading causes of contact dermatitis. You know how many people out there are being treated with all kinds of pr prednisones and, what, and cortisones and all these zones because they have dermatitis that un unknowingly are being exposed to quats and these quaternary ammonium compounds, and it's literally killing them. Now these things, they're found in your fabric softeners. They are, and you know, you ever notice that like when your neighbor has one of these um, sheets that they put in the dryer, I mean, it smells up the whole neighborhood. It smells good. And you know that they, I, I know just by the smell that they've got their, their washing clothes. That's washing clothes day. I can smell it in the whole neighborhood. This is how powerful this stuff is. Remember I told you, you can, you can drink it. You can get it absorbed through your skin. You can breathe it in through your nose and through your mouth. And they're found in the fabric softeners and, and most household cleaners labeled antibacterial. So let me reiterate this and repeat this. If you have a household cleaning agent or product that's labeled antibacterial, I feel comfortable in saying to you that nine times out of 10, you've got quats in there. You've got these quaternary ammonium compounds. So look, if you have sensitive skin, if you do, if you are, and again, if you are a, um, a white female, Caucasian female, if you are a black, a Negroid female that has the sickle cell anemia uh, uh, gene, genotype in you, um, or if you are a um, redheaded individual, or if you are a freckled individual, or look, if you just have sensitive skin, then you need to, if you are any one of those, you need to be aware of this chemical and these products that probably most assuredly have these chemicals in them. See, you, you just have, excuse me, you just have to start looking at what it is you are using to clean your house. Now, you learned about the quats, now, we're going to learn about the butoxyethanols. The butoxyethanols. That's a mouthful. That's the key ingredient. And I picked this slide because now, you know, we talked, probably what I talked about mostly affected females or women. Now we're going to talk to the guys because it's you and I, usually the guys that are doing the window cleaning. Usually, not always, but usually. So look. These ingredients, the butoxyethanols, these are found in the window, in the kitchen, and in the multi-purpose cleaners. Let me repeat that. They're found in the window cleaners, in the kitchen cleaners, and in the multi-purpose. You know, one size, it can clean anything and everything. That's where you get these butoxyethanols. And then there's the two, number two butoxyethanol, that, that's an ingredient, that's one of the uh, butoxyethanols. It can cause extreme irritation 
when it's inhaled, especially if you're in an unventilated area like your bathroom. It's the most um, uh, unventilated room in most homes. You get them in apartments, you get them in condos. They don't have windows anymore in the bathroom. Unless you have an older home or you built your house and to specs and you wanted a window, yeah, they have the exhaust fans. But I got to tell you, um, according to what I saw, the ratings of the exhaust fans, uh, most of them are archaic. Uh, most of them are, are non-functional in that, yes, the fan moves, it runs, it makes a noise when you turn the switch, but its ability to exhaust, to carry up the exhaust or the fumes is minimal at best. And if you want to check a cheap way to check the efficacy of your exhaust fan, right? Get some matches or, a, yeah, matches are going to be best. And um, light a few matches and start underneath your exhaust fan and when it's on and see if it pulls the flame up or if it, if it pulls the uh, smoke, the soot or the smoke from the, from the flame up. And then start to carry it further and further away. Light another match and go maybe a foot away then go two feet away with another match and another and another, and you'll see just how efficacious your exhaust fan is, okay? So we get back into the bathroom now, and we're gonna agree that it's unventilated. And now you're cleaning and you're breathing in this stuff. According to the EPA, and you can go to their website, you, and, and I, I encourage you to do so, because they even had the, um the courage to show you that high levels of number two butyl uh butyl in mild cases that is mild breathing that's where you just do a little bit and you do it not frequently it can it causes sore throats and over time contributes to narcosis you'll have to look that one i want you to look that one up because you're going to go oh my god that could be me but narcosis also pulmonary edemas, severe, now listen, the word, it, you go to their website, read it, severe liver and severe kidney damage, right? This is on their website. Now, how many people go to the website and read this? Well, I want you to, because you're not the typical person. You're educated. You're going to do due diligence because you want to enjoy the best performance of your life, and I'm empowering you with knowledge, with information that you can use that will help you to do just that. And by doing that, it's gonna save you literally tens of thousands of dollars because you're gonna prevent severe liver or kidney damage or pulmonary edema. Remember I told you that over 92, 94% of all of our diseases are environmentally, we bring it upon ourselves through the environment, but you're gonna prevent that. Not only are you gonna to save tons of money, uh, and, and time in the hospital, but you're going to lengthen your life and y your quality of living is going to be outstanding because of that. Okay. But getting back to this, unfortunately, the law does not require it does not as damaging as the EPA will tell you this garbage is the law doesn't require this two uh, butoxyethanol uh, to be listed on a product's label. And, and that, that's a kicker, right? Really. So your best bet is to, is to use um, your own products from natural ingredients or do some research about the types of products that you do buy. So either, either make, make some yourself or, you know, if you're going to use products, then you got to do some research on your own to make sure that they're safe. Okay, and I'll talk about this as we go further. I'm not going to leave you hanging, right? But again, I'm laying the groundwork. Here we go, ammonia. We, most of us know about ammonia. We grew up with ammonia. That was the cleaning agent. And, uh, you know, I got to tell you that any cleaning product that promises you a streak-free shine, if I don't care what it's called, or who makes it, or how long, if it promises you, if one of the promises on the label is that it's streak-free, right? 
whether it's a window cleaner, a countertop, or a, a stainless steel, whatever it cleans, ammonia is going to be the main ingredient. I promise you. And unfortunately, ammonia is a very powerful irritant, and it's going to affect you right away. Remember, the smell, as soon as your body smells it, boom, you're not going to be able to breathe around it. And that's, thank God for that, because your body is protecting you, because if those stinking ammonia molecules get to your brain, it could be lights out, and it could be permanent lights out. It'll burn your lungs. It'll burn your throat. We went. Th I went through this, you know, before. But hey, I'm going to repeat it. It'll burn your throat. It'll burn your esophagus. It'll burn your lungs. It'll burn your belly. It's really, really bad stuff, right? And the people who are most susceptible to the dangers of ammonia are people with, with already uh, pre-existing lung or breathing problems. And who are we talking about? Well. Um, the elderly right now, uh, you know, we're talking about the elderly and people that have smoked cigarettes, people that have asthma, people that have COPD or emphysema, whatever. Those are the people that are really, really going to be damaged by this stuff. And if you are healthy and you're using this stuff, well, you're going to join their ranks because you're not going to escape it. Why? Because for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. And if you have healthy lungs, those healthy lungs are going to be burned. That's it, because it's hard to avoid breathing in ammonia when you're using it. As a matter of fact, you can't. You can hold your breath and you can scrub, 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 run out and come back. But uh, the people who get a lot of ammonia exposure, like housekeepers, right, they're going to develop chronic bronchitis and asthma. I promise you. They're going to do, as a doctor, I'm telling you that this is what's going to happen. It's like, if you have a person that puts their hand in a fire, I promise you their flesh is going to burn. Well, in the same way, I'm telling you, if they have chronic exposure to ammonia uh, over and over again, they will develop bronchitis. They will develop asthma. So as an important side here, ammonia, listen now very carefully because I don't want to forget this point because some people like to mix things together when they're cleaning. If you mix ammonia or an ammonia containing product with one, if you mix it with bleach or a bleach containing product, hear me and hear me well, if you mix the two together, it will create a poisonous gas that will that means with inevitable certainty, it will kill you. It will kill you. So you don't mix those products. As a matter of fact, on some of the labels, if you read them, they may even tell you, do not mix this product with any chlorine containing product or with bleach. Or if it's a chlorine contain, it, they, that product may say, do not mix this this product with any ammonia or containing or ammonia products. That's it. Boom. So here you heard it from me. Don't do it. All right. That fact and that fact alone has will literally save your life. All right. So if if you're thinking of doing it, consider now your life has been your life is having been saved by what you just learned. So we move on now to chlorine. Because it's probably, it's such a common chemical in our daily lives. I mean, chlorine bleach, chlorine this, chlorine that, chlorine in, in oh, I, I, I digress, but chlorine in the water, chlorine in the swimming pools, chlorine in the water you drink, chlorine in the septic, I mean, it's chlorine, right? In, in the clothes you're washing, any excess exposure to chlorine will cause a chronic disease over time. When you clean with it, you breathe it in. And you're, you're possibly, if you're not wearing gloves, you're probably absorbing, you are, you're absorbing it through your skin, right? It's in the city water. Uh, they use it to clean out the bacteria in the city water. If you're purifying your own water, you're using it to clean out the bacteria in your water. And again, the exposure over time leads to a toxic burden. 
So again, it's best to avoid it whenever possible because, you know, even if you're wearing gloves, you're probably wearing the same gloves for a long, long, long time because you're not buying a new pair because they don't look like they need to be replaced. There's no holes in them, but I'm telling you, the bleach is eating away at those gloves and they're becoming thinner and thinner and now they're becoming more permeable, which means that you got it. That chlorine is getting through the glove into you and you're absorbing it. So that's the way it's going, okay? Now, I wanna talk to you about the sodium hydroxide. Man, we, we got, oh my, it's, it's also known as lye, L-Y-E. That's sodium hydroxide and it's extremely abrasive. That's why it works so well in your oven. And look at this poor young lady. Where's she sticking her head? Right where she's spraying this garbage. And what do you think she's breathing in? Oh, golly gee. She's breathing that stuff in and she's got a smile on her face. I, I just hope that she was a model that was just demonstrating something here, you know, for this purpose and not demonstrating how well the sodium hydroxide cleans. Because this young lady will have certainly suffered brain damage, heart damage, lung damage. And you know, if she does this for a living, I dare say she's probably not even alive today. Okay, but anyway, the sodium hydroxide, it's used in oven cleaners, it's used in the drain cleaners because it does such a great job of destroying everything and anything that gets in its way. It'll eat through anything. It has a powerful ability to clean away the grime and, and that because of that, it makes it extremely dangerous. If it touches your skin or it gets in your eyes, I promise you, it's gonna eat through that. It'll eat through your eyeball, it'll eat through your skin wherever that skin is located. And it's gonna cause on the skin what's called a severe burn. And if you inhale it, like I said a few moments ago, it's gonna burn you got it, it's gonna burn the inside of your mouth, it's gonna burn your throat, your tongue, your esophagus, your trachea, your voice box, it's gonna burn the, 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 the lungs, it's gonna burn everything, everything that, that gets in its way, it's gonna burn. And uh, that burn will last uh, from anywhere from a few days to the rest of your life if you live through it, and I'm not being facetious about it, okay? I gotta take a breath here because, you know, admittedly, I get, I get invested in, in these things because I wanna, I wanna share with you just how important it is that you know these things, all right? Because my goal is to help you, whoever you are, to enjoy the best performance of your life and it starts with knowledge acted upon, okay? So now that we talked about you and me, let's talk a little bit about the environmental impact. Now, look, I don't want you to mis be misconstrued. I don't buy into the um, climate change baloney um, because it's baloney. And if, if you wanna ask me why, someday you come into my office or give us a call and I'll tell you why. And I'll, I'll show you the proof for it as well. Anyway but it does impact the environment. It surely does. And it does erode the environment. It, it does, but it doesn't change the climate. Okay, anyway, so it affects our personal health, you, me, your loved ones, your pets and everything, because of using these, these toxic cleaning products, they also affect our water, the quality of our water. They're gonna affect the wildlife too, because hey, the wildlife is gonna drink the water and everything else, because these things go down the drain and then they're, they're put into the sewage and then they're distributed into the, to the great un, uh, unknown there. And many of these chemicals that I've shared with you, they're not uh, biodegradable. That means they're not broken down in the soil and the water. So they hang out. I mean, they just float around and they get picked up or absorbed and they are a pollutant. They're a corrosive. They are erosive and their presence it, they harm the wildlife, and it, it eventually, as it harms the wildlife, it makes it back to you and to me. The water we pollute uh, will eventually be consumed by us, right? It, it goes in a circle, a cycle there. 
and it's going to be picked up by the plants. It's going to be in the soil and then the plants and then the rain, it's going to pick it up and it's going to drop it back down again. And like I said, in the wildlife, I mean, people eat fish, uh, people eat deer, uh, people eat chicken, people eat cattle, people eat turkeys. Yeah, you get my, my, my message here. So this stuff that goes up, these, these animals eat that stuff, and then we eat the animals that eat that stuff. And so we're eating that stuff all over again. So you can see how it's, uh, it has an environmental impact. So what about our rivers? Well, there's phosphates. You remember the phthalates? Well, these are phosphates. And it's a water softening mineral. It's an additive that was once used widely, like in laundry detergents and, and, and other cleaners. Like, and what it does is it acts like a fertilizer. So it can spawn the overgrowth of certain algae. And the overabundance of that, of that, of that aquatic plant life, it, it um, sucks up all the oxygen in the water. And you see on the news every once in a while, you see these fish kills, you know? And we go, oh my gosh, how did that happen, blah, blah, blah. Well, and it, not only does it kill the fish, but it kills the other organisms, the other plants and things that the fish are eating. So it just wreaks havoc on the whole ecosystem. And it's from the phosphates. You know, there's a lot of states that have banned the use of phosphates on laundry detergents, but I gotta tell you, they're still widely used, like in these automatic dishwasher detergents. If you got an automatic dishwasher, then you know you're using those little things that make the. Um, remember, I told you it, it doesn't streak and all of that, so it clears it out. Those are phosphates that you put in there in the rinse cycle, so that you have these crystal clear glasses and dishes and whatnot. It's the spot removers or whatever, right? Those are phosphates. And when the dishwasher empties, and probably, I think seven, uh, according to the statistics that I read, seven out of every 10 households has a dishwasher. Yep, the apartments, the condominiums, the, the homes. Yeah, I mean, dishwashers, it's our day and age. Seven out of 10 households have a dishwasher in it. And what do you think they're using? Oh yeah, they're using the phosphates. So that goes out and that's polluting our water. And then we end up drinking that water. So that's that cycle here. So what do we've got to do? We, you and me, we've got to clean smarter. So I want to tell you something, just because when you go out, because this is a, a very powerful marketing thing that they're using today. And I want to tell you just because what you have in your hand is in a green bottle because green is all the craze. We've gone green. You know, that's the mantra today. Green, green, green is this automatically. It means green is safe. Let me reiterate that if just because what you're holding in your hand is in a green bottle or a cardboard box, or has some nature theme design on it or to it doesn't mean it's non-toxic. And, and when you see terms like natural or eco-friendly, you shouldn't equate that with safety unless they're backed up with specific ingredient information. And this is what you wanna see. If they have the ingredients listed on the, just because on the front side, it says it's eco-friendly or it's natural or whatever, or the, the bottle's green or it's a cardboard box, or they got the, you know, the picture of, of all these flowers with the birds and maybe a deer in the back. It doesn't mean it's not toxic. What you want to look for on the label and the ingredients says solvent free, solvent free. Remember we talked about the solvents or it has to say, and in addition, or it, it'll say no petroleum-based ingredients and or no phosphates. Hey, if you see all three of those on there, you got a really, really good product because I'm telling you, just because it says on the label it's non-toxic, the truth is this, non-toxic has no official definition. So it doesn't mean diddly.
doesn't mean a thing. So unless the third party has verified that, that this product is non-toxic and it lists that it's solvent-free, no petroleum-based ingredients and no phosphates, then you don't buy the product just because it says it's non-toxic. Don't take it at face value. You got to read the label, make certain that if you're buying off the internet from one of these companies, these green companies or these, uh, you know, natural company or these eco-friendly websites or whatever, make sure it's backed up from a, uh, a third party has verified it that the product that you're about to buy is solvent-free, no petroleum-based ingredients, and no phosphates. That's the only way you're going to be able to do that. So you got to find products that you can trust, right? Marketers know that being environmentally friendly is the trend right now. We're doing it with the foods, looking for organic, non-GMOs non and whatnot. And so these marketers see it in this, in this area too of purchase. So they design their products to make it seem like they're eco-friendly as well. For example, there's a, a lot of aerosol spray cans and they're labeled no CFCs. That means the uh, chlorofluorocarbons, right? They have no chlorofluorocarbons in them, which deplete the ozone layer. That was a big craze back in uh, probably the 70s and 80s, or even the 90s. And that led consumers, people that were buying, to believe that they're buying a more eco-friendly product. Well, <laughs> look, I got to tell you the truth. If it says it on the label today, no CFCs, and you think, oh, great, it's eco-friendly, and I'm buying this aerosol can, and it's not hurting, blah, blah, blah. I got to tell you that CFCs were banned from aerosols back in, in the 70s. So it makes that label meaningless. Right? It's purely a marketing ploy. This is what we call now, it's called greenwashing or green marketing. That's what they're doing because they know that there's somebody out there that's, that's on their radar. They're looking for eco-friendly green or whatever, because that's the word today that, that everybody's using. You know, it's green this and green that. And you got these politicians that are doing this green garbage and all this other stuff. Look, it's a bunch of baloney. You're smarter than that. Certainly now that you've heard what I've shared with you, you are definitely smarter than the average bear, right? You know what's going on. So now what you've got to do, you've got to start to eliminate the toxins. The best thing that you can, you can start doing right away is number one, to use fewer products and you use them left, less often. So what you want to do is you find a few multi-purpose products that work really well and you use the remainder of what you do have very sparingly, even better. You might dispose of those products so that they're out of your house, right? Because there are some cities now that have special facilities, just like in picking up the, um, the uh, old TVs and the old electronics and this and that. They have a certain day or a certain weekend when they do that. Well, they have, and they also have places where you dump your old prescription medications and all this. Well, some cities now, and you can check the city in which you reside, see if they have a, a facility or a certain day or time of the year when they collect the toxins from your home. <clears throat> and um, you can go ahead and you can put them there. And if that service is unavailable to you, then what you wanna do is this. <clears throat> now listen, you wanna put them into your trash. You don't, you do not wanna pour them down the drain and throw the empty container in the trash. You take the whole kit and caboodle and you put it in the trash. That's what you wanna do. And if you don't feel safe in doing that, then you put all of them in one big bag or box and take them to a recycling center and ask them to dispose of them, okay? They may be able to help you. or as they used to say, let your fingers do the walking through the yellow pages. We don't have the yellow pages anymore. So let your fingers walk up and down your computer screen or your device and find out on the internet 
if there's any agencies, uh, poison control centers would be a great start or agencies in your particular uh, area of residence that will accept these things or that you can take them to, all right? That's what you wanna do. And you wanna replace the products that you're getting rid of. So you wanna buy from companies that you trust. Now, in order to do that, you have got to do your research. You gotta find out what their mission statement says. And there are a lot of good companies out there that you can get their products that are very safe and are true um, to, to their word, that they are not noxious, they don't, they're non-phosphates, they don't have the phthalates, they don't have the corrosions or the corrosives in them, they don't have any of those things and they're clean products. So you can find those, those companies out there, we'll see what their mission statement is and if it, if it includes something about the environment. Because if it's, it's safe for the environment, we're gonna backpedal a little bit, that means it's gonna be safe for you as a human being, all right? So if it's safe for the environment, for the little birdies and the little animals and the streams and the plants and everything, you'll know that it automatically it's gonna be safe for you. And also, um, when, when you go onto these sites, see in their mission statement, because many of them do, see if they state if it refuses to test on animals. If so, then that means if they don't test it on animals, then that means that these companies are probably pretty ethical and confident that their product won't cause, cause you harm, your loved ones harm, or your little pets harm, right? Because they don't, they don't have to test them on the animals because these are safe ingredients. See, it's like saying, well, let's test this apple or this corn on a cob, or I, I don't know, it's, it's a bad example, or, um, you know, this natural product or this food on my pet. Well, you, you know that dog food, I, well, I don't know. I'm, maybe that's really a bad example. I should have kept my mouth shut and kept going here. But, you know, um, you, you want to look on their site and see if, if does it refuse to test it on animals. If it does, then maybe, uh, if so, these are the signs that the company is probably pretty ethical. That's what I wanted to say. And another option, it, you know, you can make your own cleaning products. There are, there are a lot of things you can use, like baking soda, and, and there's a lot of, you can go to YouTube, we have some videos, and there are others that have uh, recipes on how to make these natural cleaning things, but look, you can use baking soda, you can use uh, uh, vinegar, white vinegar, it's great, I'm telling you. You can use lemon juice, and, and now, and you can even use vodka. Vodka, yep, uh, we use, in our home, we use vodka. You can use it, and not, not in the way that you might typically think vodka's used. We use it as a cleaning agent. Yes, it will clean out your body, trust me. <laughs> but we can you can clean the interior of your homes using vodka and and these are some things that you probably already have you have probably have baking soda you have vinegar lemon juice you can get and and that and they're probably already in your pantry and they can double as household cleaners so all you've got to do is to go to these sites and uh, find out you know google it and you'll come up with these recipes where you can start using these things. And oh my gosh, they're great to repel bugs. If you have a problem with ants or roaches or mites or any of these little, these little uh, fruit flies, these, these things that I've just mentioned with you, they're powerful agents to get rid of those things in your home. So anyway, I know I've covered a lot of material. I wanna thank you so very much for allowing me to share this information with you because our time is over. But if you put everything together that I just shared with you, that means that your work is just beginning, right? Your work, it's uh, as the carpenters used to, to sing years ago, it, it's only just begun. So that's what you wanna do. You wanna, you wanna put this stuff together, you wanna act upon it. And look, as always, if you have any questions, uh, or if you're in need of any help, 
please email us at, at this, uh, this address. It's office at pro-activewellness.com. Again, that's office at pro-activewellness.com. Or you can call us at the office. That's area code 217. The number is 431-2010. That's 431-2010. And look, I might invite you to uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's Dr. Robert Bartosz. J just type that in on YouTube. Please subscribe to us and share this information with others, and you'll be doing them a great service as well. Thanks again so much for allowing me to share this information with you, for being a part of this video. And, um, you know, until the next video or until the next time we get together, and as always, God bless.